Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. Today I'm having an interview with Brad. Brad's from Missouri and Brad's roughly made about 150 grand last year. Listen, it's not about the money. Brad's, what he's learned is crazy. And that's why I got him on an interview. Brad sells cars at a Mercedes dealership. He started out in domestic. I'm gonna let Brad tell a story. He switched over to luxury and he is killing it. He's number three in his story. He's on his way to number one. And he's moving so fast, and he has so many amazing things to talk about. Uh, Brad, introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, what you want to talk about. Hey, guys. My name is Brad Fajardo. I'm with Mercedes, like he said. And what we're going to talk about today, basically, is moving up in the world and accelerating your game and not letting the dealership and management hold you back, training really hard to get where you need to be and taking advantage of your training and moving on to what is comfortable for you. It doesn't have to be a luxury brand like I work for, a high line brand. What it has to be is once you learn the car industry, something that's gonna take care of yourself and you wanna surround yourself with people who can help you. So you start with your initial training and you get through the basics, right? And then once you get the training under your belt, you could go anywhere, right Andy? You yeah, tell, tell, tell them where you started. So I started at a domestic dealership in the middle of Missouri, and I was a general manager for a restaurant, and I was in the restaurant business. Side note, restaurant guys make really good car salesmen, I found out. So if you've been in the bar business, then man, you'll make a heck of a car salesman. But one of my customers was a GM of a dealership, and he said, hey, come work for me. You can make the same amount of money, but I'll, I'll even make you more, and you get to work days. You know, so I was like, okay, well, that sounds good. And he gave me a job and I spent a year developing my skill and training. But before I started, I really didn't know where to go. Like, like I, I just like all other car sales guys, we don't know where to begin and what to say and what the process is. So I YouTubed, this was three years ago, I over three years ago, I YouTube car sales training. That's all I cared about. And this guy with this, you know, these big muscles and his really tight, this really tight button up shirt and his flashy Super hair, tight. you know. Yeah, that damn shirt was way too tight. <laughs> He's just smiling at me, He's man. Super. I tell you, man, when you when you look at when you look the camera in the eyes that year, I knew what you had to say was true. And I knew that I wanted to learn for some, from somebody. So the first thing I recommend doing is getting a mentor, following somebody, uh, following Andy and learning learning from somebody because you can't just walk in here thinking you know everything you're going to fall flat on your face so i trained and trained and for one week that's all i did was watch youtube videos my first week of training in the domestic brand i completed all my training across five brands in one week my first month selling cars i sold 14 and a half and three weeks of on the floor to my first day i spent a year developing my skill and getting better and after a year or so I was number one selling 20 plus cars a month. And I decided that I wanted to go sell for a dealership that I was more comfortable with and make more money and elevate my game. So I did a lot of research and found that I wanted to sell for a dealership that had a really good backbone. So that's where we're at today. Right, so you choose this Mercedes store. Now tell me, clientele changed. How did you have to change when you went into that Mercedes store? Let's talk about the shift because this shift is, is something this shift you can teach people to do in a domestic store on their own and they don't have right. to go to a luxury store to learn right. this. Tell them what you learned and what they can do right now to capitalize and make that money that you, you're just starting to earn. To right. So, here, so here's what's going on with my life. In the domestic store, and I'm not taking away from any of, not even domestic, Toyota, any of those off, uh, you know, outside of the country brands or the high volume brands, I'm not taking away from them, but they're, they're, the managers and the company, they only care about high volume. So online is your competition and they're, they're, they're making these cars so, such low price and what's the percentage of people who shop online? It's like you said the other day, it's like 99%, right? Yeah. It's way up there. So. So when you're, when you're talking to these high volume customers who are just trying to get the best price from the get go online, you get your, your mindset develops around, that's how I have to sell them this car. But when you get to a company that's a little bit different, who likes to make money for you, then what happens is you have to change the way you sell. You have to adapt 
to the way you sell. And if I would have learned that it's not about the low, the low ball, low baller price point and, and started elevating my game by speaking to people differently, then I would have been way better off in the domestic brand. If I go back to a domestic brand, like let's say Ford or Chevy, I would crush it because I learned that it's not about the numbers. They don't care at the end of the day. They want to buy from a good salesperson who will take care of them. Right? So my clients are, you know, I got lawyers and finance managers and business owners, and I had to talk to them like they, like I'm an executive, okay, of, of a company. And talk about your education and how, what you had to learn with, without, I mean, I mean, that's important because a lot of guys that are in the car business don't have a lot of education. They, they didn't graduate with, you know, eight years in college or anything like that. So tell, tell them, you, you talked about acting and, and playing right. to a new level. Right. So, so like Andy says, and I really, this really hit home is that we're all actors, right? But the thing is, you can't drop your act at any, at any time. You'll take that wall and bring it straight up in front of you guys. So with that being said, when you're speaking to customers, you've got to talk to them like you're on their level of education. I, I went to high school and graduated, but I didn't go to college. And in school, you always think that that's what you have to do. You know, they don't tell you you can make a million dollars a year as an entrepreneur because they want you to be in the doctor's position. They want you to be a lawyer. They want you to be this wholesome guy who wakes up and kisses his wife and all this stuff. We're sales guys. We grinder. We're grinders, right? So what I did was I elevated my game and I started speaking like a, what we call speaking like a pro and dressing like a pro. And when my customers come in, I've got to, I've got to basically pretend that I am as educated as them. When they're speaking to me, I have to gain the knowledge and understand what they're saying and talk like them, like I'm an executive. And if I would talk like that to, like I, in the previous dealership, man, I would have made a lot more money. Because they just want someone who is like them. They want you to mirror them and they want you to, to be like them. And they want to make sure that they're buying someone who can, who can teach them about cars and teach them about what they're doing. They're not gonna buy some from somebody who, they, they don't think is worth their time. Yeah, or doesn't think that they can help them spend their money right. That's right, especially that they, and that's not, that's not like just rich people, that's everybody, right? Everybody. It's everybody, yes. and that's what, that's what people need to understand, and car guys need to understand that it's not about the money, it's not about the numbers, it's about, you know, welcoming people into your dealership, being good to them, taking the time to be with them, and, and then closing it up the whole time as well. Tell, tell them about the way that you greet people differently, about the way you've seen salesmen greet people, so how you changed it up. Tell that's them that. The thing, that's the I thing. You know, when, you get, when you're getting into the sales industry, the first thing that's the problem for people is they don't know what to say. And, and that's what the fear comes from, is because I don't really know how people are going to react because I don't know what I'm going to say. Well, you got to get your greeting down and it sounds so corny, but you have to get the greeting down because that will set the tone for the whole rest of your day. And when someone walks in my dealership, I'm not bibbly bounce, bouncy. Hey guys, welcome to, you know, Mercedes or whatever. You know, I'm warm and welcoming like they're walking into my house. Okay. Yes. So I walk up to somebody, let me give you an example. I don't care. I'll walk up to somebody like this. Hey guys, welcome to Mercedes Benz. How are you doing today? I'm Brad and you are just like that. And they, and, they, and they just warm up to me right away because the first time they see you, oh, there's a sales guy. He's coming after us. You know what I mean? Don't walk like you're on a mission to take them from what they're trying to accomplish. Walk like, hey, this is my house. Welcome to my house. Be very warm and welcoming, and that will set the tone for the dealership. And you got to be that way throughout the whole entire sales process and act like, like Andy says. That's amazing, man. That is strong. I think that that right there alone is huge. You said that you got into Mercedes. Um, you elevated your game by obviously not just acting like a car salesman, which is that, hey, guys, how you doing? Welcome to the store. How can I help you? You know, that fast pitch, but more of yeah. that, hey, welcome to my home. What's going on, buddy? You know, right? Like yeah. introducing and talking to them like they're family. Yeah. And they're, they're I'm home. in the Midwest, and it doesn't work that way for everybody. you got to really understand who you're looking at and how they want you to greet them. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm in the Midwest where everybody's like that. But I know for a fact on the East Coast, if there's East Coast guys watching this, you do have to be a little more firm with your handshake with some of those East Coast guys, you know what I'm talking about? But yeah. you still have to be warm and welcoming. 
even if they're straight up, hey, I want that car. What's the best price? It don't matter. You still have to be warm and welcoming. You know what I mean? So that's a big deal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's how you take control is that you show them that this is your ground. You know what you're doing. You know how to do your job and you're the right dude. And people feel right. that. They can feel it fast. Well, at the end of the day, the point of this video is, is real simple. It's, you know, I was, at a, I was in a, a, a lower, lower end dealership when it comes to like how much money I was making. And that wasn't because of my product. That was because of my team and because of the owner and because of how they marketed. And what I did was I decided once I got the skill set, I told myself, you know what? I could go sell insurance. I could go sell anything. I could go sell construction projects. What do I want to sell? What, where do I want to be? And then I did this research that I told you about earlier. And I looked on Google and I just kind of read some reviews. I found a place with a good service department that I knew had good management that was going to take care of me, checked out their pay plan. And you know what I did? I hope my boss doesn't care if he sees this because I love him to death. I told him I was going to work here. I told him, I said, here's the thing. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best at your store. It's going to take me time. But what I'm going to do is I want to come work for you at Mercedes. I could go sell. I could move right now. I've got nothing holding me down. I could go to California and sell for Lamborghini. But I want to sell for you, and I want to sell in your dealership. And he said, when can you be here? Love it. So I went in the next day for an interview, and, it, and you know, it took me a couple interviews to get the job. But what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't have to be a luxury brand. It just has to be something that you're passionate about. Right, Andy? That's right, man. Yeah. And you, and you have to train to become one of the things that you said to me that I really loved what you said. And this is this this resonates a lot. To me, you said that you have a lot of really good salespeople where you work. Right. You right. said that there's a lot of talent. Right. If you're in a dead dealership and nobody cares, go to a place where people do care. That's right. right. That's right, because you're not going to make it on your own. I don't care how much training you do. And I don't know if you've ever spoken about this in your videos before, but I'm a firm believer that building, building, you know, you, I read, I just got through your first, first course. And I don't want to spoil anything, but we got to build ourselves from the ground up. Okay. And putting people around you who are successful is a really good way to do that. Like talking to you right now, putting yourself around people who are taking 50 smoke breaks a day, who aren't taking lot ups, who are just waiting for that next free gimme deal. Those aren't successful people. They're not one percenters. I'll tell you that right now. And I, I'll be honest with you, Andy, I, I'm, I'm not a one percenter right now. That's why I'm taking your course. Because but you're doing great and, and, and you're on your course. I, I want to be there and I'm so close. I would say I'm working at about 40% efficiency. I want to get videos down and I want to do more. And that's why I'm taking your course to elevate my game. And I'm going to train like, you talk, like you're talking about. I'm going to keep training and getting better because I want to hit, in the next couple of years, I want to hit 400,000. I can go anywhere and do it. I just got to, I got to work hard. And that's what I want to do. Take your course, learn the rest of the stuff that I need to know, and then just keep learning and talking to you. Yeah. And I honestly think you're going to do it right there where you're at. You sound like you're in a beautiful environment. You yeah. sound very happy with the team you're with. And right. as you rise to the top, I think you're going to break records that are going to be dangerous. That's right. I think it's good. It's good. I, I can, and I can, I can smell the confidence on you. And Thank I just you. want to tell you, bulletproof confidence is everything and it's not arrogance right. it's not cockiness it's confidence right. and it's right. so important in this business because so many salesmen lack the confidence that's needed yeah and you know why is because they 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 have fear in their heart they have fear in their heart because i've had the fear sometimes i still get the fear okay but you know what fear is fear is the fear is the enemy of success Yes. Fear is the enemy of success. If you want to be successful, you can't be fearful. If someone says, I'm think I want to go home and think about it, you just lock up. But if you have confidence, like you said, not arrogance, confidence, then you want to go home and think about it? You know, like really? Yeah. Yeah. Get them to tell you what the real reason is for not wanting to buy the car, right? I mean, sometimes I just ask him after I've closed tried closing them six times, I'll just say why. You know, and that takes, that takes courage, not so much confidence as it is courage. But a lot of these sales guys are very fearful. I got a friends that I'm trying to work that are in the sales industry that are other dealerships that call me for advice. And I'm trying to tell them, you guys, you guys are scared. I'm not trying to be, call you sissies, but you got to conquer that feel, fear or you're never, ever going to be successful. And you're just going to fall flat on your face. 
Yeah, I, I, so I want to talk about two things real quick, and then we'll jump yeah. off your foot. So, yeah. so number one, you said exactly the same way I feel. You said that you have fear, right, sometimes, yeah. but it's not as much as it used to be. Right. That's exactly and you, right. And you know that the more you train, that the That's more right. that that fear disappears. Yeah, because we have to, the, the training teaches us what to say. It's that simple. It teaches us what to say. And if we don't know what to say, we don't know word tracks and how to handle situations, then, we're, then the fear comes up because we don't know what to do and we don't, we're afraid. We're afraid that people will say no. But training yeah. gets you to the level that you need to be to where you don't have fear because you already know what to say. It's like walking down the park. Yep. All right? It's, yep, and you're thinking big. One of the things that I love about it is this. You never made 150 grand and then all of a sudden now you're, now you're making 150 and you know what you could do is you could take that 150, sit back, you could go work hard and manage making 150 over and over again. But you said, no, I made 150. Now I'm going to start thinking three times as big and well, I'm going I to 400. I just my income in one year, Andy. Why not do it again? What's you know, I, no, I, I wasn't sure it was possible, but I see the people around me and I watch your videos and I know what you're capable of doing. I'm not saying I'm better than you, but I, I think, you know, I take that as, as energy. You know what I mean? I, I need you to be better than I that. I it to myself yes. every single day. And I'm like, you know what, if Andy can make $700,000 a year and he comes from Midwest just like me and he was born in kind of the same situation, why can't I go train? Why can't I go do it myself? Yeah, let, let, let's talk about one last thing. Just, yeah. You don't have to talk about your upbringing, but you weren't born from rich family, right? Absolutely not. I mean, you know, I'm from a small town in Missouri. It's medium size. It's not, it's not big. And I, I didn't have the, with the I was, we don't have to talk about the details, but I didn't have guidance. And you know what, that's what's good about the car industry is that if you don't have guidance, you don't need it anyway. You just need courage. You know what I mean? Because guidance Man. comes from your parents and stuff and leadership. And if you didn't have that growing up, and Andy, I don't know if you did or not, but it no. makes you feel so much better when you become successful or you're becoming successful because you did it on your own and you trained on your own and you had your own motivation on your own. So my upbringing was, I mean, worse than blue collar. I mean, I've lived in my car before, you know, when I was 19 because I had no family to help me out because I was born into that. Well, guess what? I'd say in the restaurant business, I was broke all the time because you know that $50,000 isn't going to get you that much money, get, get you that That's many right. things. So, you know, I'm not broke anymore and it feels good you know, because of all the training that I've done. Well, number one, I'm really proud of you, dude. Thank you, man. You're I appreciate that. I'm not going to say you're the reason, but I will say that you did help me a lot. You know, I, I did use that president's clothes a couple of times. <laughs> I don't hey, know if you remember that listen, clothes. You know, things are different now. I know you've elevated your game too, so. <laughs> no, we, we all had to. Listen, I'm going to tell you, it's something that you said is that you never stop training and you said I can get better. I can. Listen, I I just have to say this because just for the record, I've been doing this for 23 years and yeah. every single day I train to this day, just this morning, I shot a video in training and I learned something that I had never learned in 23 years. Yeah. There will never be a day that will come in our life until they bury us that we will not have something to learn that we didn't know the day before. And you know what's funny that Never you said stopped. that is that what's funny that you said that as I was thinking about this morning and what I wanted to say to you on camera. Let me tell you this: this is just exactly what you said. Success is not an is not an end game. Andy, you're not successful. You're a successful person, but you're not at the end of your rope. You're not dead. Oh. When you die, someone will say he was a successful successful person. Success is a journey. Yes. It's not a destination. It's a journey. And the next thing that is your goal. And that will be, that was your next branch of success. But I'm not successful because I make $150,000 a year. I'm on a journey. Success, success is a journey itself. That's right. And you said, you said something earlier. We talked about Zig Ziglar said failure is um, an event. It's not a person. Right. So and let me tell you, you my win. month last month was, was, was a fail for me. I was one short of my personal goal. And I don't go by money like most people do, how much money I'm going to make a month. I go by volume because it makes me feel good. Everyone's got their niche. And I always set goals for myself. And, and people need to study about that and learn about that because that's another thing. If you want to be successful, you have, to, you have to set goals. I learned that last year. So, Clear goals. 
Yeah, last month I was beating myself up on the last day of the month because I had all these car deals lined out and they all fell apart. And then I, I watched your video and it's true. You know, it was an event. I put it in my rear view mirror and, and I came into work the next day. And I mean, I'm not going to tell you my volume right now because I don't want to, you know, get into that. But I, I'm doing well this month and I'm, I'm, I am going to hit my goal this month. I'm 100% yeah. sure. I'm 100%. I actually set my goal a little higher than I did last month. Yeah, just because the rent was due. You had to pay the rent. <laughs> yeah, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I don't mean by like the house rent. I mean like yeah. you, no, I got you have to pay the rent when you miss a goal for yourself. And you, and you, you, I would say there's a time to reward and then there's a time to discipline yourself. Like if you're, if you're trying to go to the gym and you wake up and you miss, well, the next day you need to, you, you need to be, you need, you need to be tough on yourself and make your workout twice as hard. That's you know right. What I'm saying? And that's, and right. that's what make up for it. For sure. Yeah, that's what keeps you honest with yourself and keeps you on your game because right. you have something inside of you. It's called a low self-limiting belief. And that right. end of the month when you didn't hit those numbers and you want to get down on yourself, something inside of you from when you were 19 living in your car wants to crawl back in and saying, hey, you're losing it. You're not that's getting right. it. You're, well, you're in the wrong the place. Here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing. I worked hard at the end of that last month, February. I worked my I worked my ass off to be honest with you, and everybody here knows it. And I did not make what I hit the goal, but I did work hard. So it's not like I have anything to be ashamed of. It's just an event that happened. So yeah, I, like still, that, I like that you taught me that. You know, and maybe you didn't teach it to me. Someone taught it to you, but it's it's an event. It just happened. I'm gonna get through it. I'm gonna press on this month, and it's just gonna be an awesome month. I'm telling you. I can't yeah. wait to finish your training. By the way, yeah, I just dude, started. Yeah. I and I noticed it in your quiz. I noticed it in your quiz. You got a couple trick ones in there. I noticed that too. If you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention, you're gonna miss those questions. Okay. Yeah, I think this is my wife over here. I think she's putting those tricky questions. I in. make the questions. Is that you? Okay. Yeah. All right, I see yeah. you. Yeah, we, you yeah. like them? You like they're them? They're good. They're good they're because good, right? I, it makes me have to I have to pay attention because they're not A B C D simple ones. Some of them threw me off. That's okay though. I passed. Exactly. Exactly. That's <laughs> meant to do so i'm glad it's challenging some people so that's good all right yeah, I, love, I love it man uh well good well listen man uh rock and roll i want you to have an amazing day have the best march of your life destroy it and then um i'll reach out to you later this week okay brother that sounds great man thank you for thank you for calling i appreciate it okay have a very blessed day and everybody should know that brad like i said 19 living in his car no education you know what I'm saying? Graduated from high school, not the best parents. He could play the victim or you can go and win, right? That's right, buddy. I love it. So anybody out there that thinks that they're in a spot and they weren't given it, guess what? It's never going to be given to you. Let's go get it. And, the, and then I think the error right there to get it is right now. That's so, right. Not later. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing everything. And uh, you, I'll buddy. see you, brother. Thank you, man. All okay. right. Thanks again.